Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. In this autopsy, we're going to be doing a Black & Decker home utility half inch electric drill. It's an antique. I have no idea how old this is, but it has the initials of like three different guys on it. So it's kind of cool. This one, it's gonna be messy. It's gonna be really messy. So we're just, we're just gonna be ready for that before we even get started because you can see this coming. I wore a nice shirt for this. There, I am properly gloved up and ready for autopsy. Oh, where to begin? I'm gonna take off the handle first. I'm gonna take off the cord first because it's kind of ungainly. We can just get rid of that. I like how it's been fixed with electrical tape. This thing weighs 10 pounds. It's a beast. The entire outside, like this whole thing's made of metal. I don't know how old it is. I'm guessing 60s, maybe 70s. Oh, I need my, I need my dish. Gotta do this right. There, now we're legit. Ah. I really don't expect there to be a lot to this. I just expect it to be very well built. This is back when Black & Decker used to make decent tools. There was a time. Can we get that off of there? Well, it's gotta come off, somebody put it on once. I'd have to break something to get that off. Okay, I got that out of there. Cloth insulated wire. Remember when I said 70s? Nope. 60s, maybe 50s, and somebody's been in here. You can see uh, new parts inside there. But to show them to you, I have to get that out. How do I get you out? I know you want to come out. All the cool kids are coming out. You can come out of there. It's going to make me work for it. So I can tell this has been repaired and modified since it was new because down here in the switch, which is really the most likely part to break, there exists this, if I can get it out. That is not an OEM part, and that didn't exist when this was made because that is a little either vinyl or nylon connector. And there's another one buried down in there. And 
Yeah, the switch is definitely verschnicked. Ah! Maybe you can do it. Ah, come on. Oh, you're so close. You're so close. You know you want it. Yes. Ah, got it. Ha ha. Okay, this is just an empty shell. We've got some electrical tape on here. A fair bit of goop. bit of paper and down inside you can see the pen do it wire clip so somebody and then there's a blue one down here on the neutral side so somebody's put a new cord on this at some point in the distant past but not not distant enough because we've got like THHN wire and that's no, not THHN that's that's SO cord so there's an SO cord, and then there's this cloth stuff. There's too many different vintages, very, very far apart. I think it's kind of cool that this is so old it was made with cloth wire. I know I love the idea of grabbing a metal-bodied tool made with cloth wire. Thankfully, this one's grounded. I, I have seen a lot of tools of this vintage where they're not, they don't bother grounding it. So, and frequently they had unpolarized plugs, so it's possible to have a manner of fault in the tool ah! or just simply plug it in the wrong way and the whole body of the tool becomes electrically charged. And that sucks. Need my little hammer. Oh, that's not going. I need a big RAR screwdriver. This one's a little bit bigger. These are on there. I, mean, I might need to call them Big Burly Backup, but before I do, I'm going to clean these all out really good so that they can get a tool in there. Power on. One. Hey, KC, can you come to Studio C for a second? KC to Studio C. Every now and then, you either got to break out the bench vise to hold it down, or you have to get a really big guy. Thankfully, while I don't have a bench vise here on set, I do have a really big guy in the next room. And it's entirely possible that his dad donated this tool. Ah! KC, sir. Yes. We need a really big guy. Yes, that's me. See these four screws right here? Mm -hmm. Can you try and get them out, please? Yeah. You got to look that way while you do it. They're going to get a cool shot of you being awesome with your rugged manliness. Because they're in there. Oh, it moved. It moved. There's one. All right, you just got to do that three more times. See, this is why we need a really big guy. This is a Black & Decker. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they've been around a while now. I feel a lot better given that you really have to work for that. Because <laughs> it wasn't happening for me. A little, little bit of gunge, yeah. All right, there you go. Thank you, sir. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Casey the Magnificent. <laughs> All right, now that we've got those loose, oh, this is, this, is, this is too easy now. This is great. It's always helpful to have a big, burly friend. 
Oh, that goes into our ways too, doesn't it? I like how the handle on top is simply a piece of three quarter inch pipe. You, you can tell by the threading right here. Look at that. That really is just a piece of three quarter inch pipe. That's kind of cool. All right, let's flip it over. We'll do the other side. It's kind of neat that despite the abuse this has had, and I'm reasonably certain parts aren't readily available anymore, it would probably be possible with enough mechanical skill and being able to fabricate some of the parts to make this a perfectly serviceable drill motor again. We're not going to do that though. Because it has chocolatey goodness inside and I want to share that with you guys. Though like the gas meter and several other autopsies it's entirely possible that at the end of this we'll be able to find enough stuff inside to make something out of, like a cool demonstration or parts for a robot or something like that. This will probably have a really cool gear drive inside it. it. Might even be a planetary gear drive and those are neat. It's okay, tools of this vintage pretty much require a good thorough whack every now and then just to get it to do what you want. But see you do that and you pop that housing off. And now, look at that, I promised you chocolatey goodness. Look inside there, chocolatey goodness. How cool is that? So there's our output shaft. You can see as I, I turn this, that gear in there turns and there's a couple bushings for other gears, smells like old grease. Now it does not have a planetary gear drive. The motor shaft comes out down in the middle. This is the motor shaft right here. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's the motor shaft right there. And then the motor shaft turns this gear here, so it's a reduction. And this gear turns this little gear here. These are, these are all one piece. And then this gear turns this, so that's a second reduction. Then this gear turns a motor shaft, and that's a third reduction. So we go down one, two, three times, and then we're out. So there's nothing there really interesting to see other than big burly gears. Let's see if, I don't know if this is going to be successful or not, but we're going to try to get into the motor housing. Now I think, and this is pure speculation, I think I can work this and get the whole gearbox off. Okay, so there's the whole gearbox. And I'm going to put that back together as best I can. Okay, so there's our gearbox. And that all still works. Ooh. Can you hear that? Listen. Okay, if I turn it out here, it just sounds like a gear drive, but if I hit that spot, it's missing a couple teeth. There's, that's, the gearbox is screwed. Somebody, somebody did something and ripped a couple teeth. So here, we have, oh, that doesn't turn. That motor doesn't turn. Grab this with a pair of pliers. Ooh. Ooh, that's not a happy motor. Look inside. That is that is not a happy motor. That's that's an angry motor. This is this is filled with caked on gunge. I don't know 
what that is, but it's not good. So here's the armature. Now the armature is a part of a motor that turns. This has, down in here, in each one of these, there will be a spool of wire. And it doesn't just, it doesn't just go around here. Like there's a, the spool that goes along here, goes all the way over, and then goes back down this side. So it's a whole coil of wire this way, around, and then all the way back and around. And the ends of that coil of wire come out to two contacts here. And in this motor, there's about nine or 10 coils of wire. And they're each connected onto here individually. So as it comes into contact, the magnetic field is just a little bit ahead of the field windings on there. And it just it's always trying to get a little bit further ahead. And then there's just this big fan for cooling. So that's just a standard electric motor. And those are covered in a lot more detail in the electric motor autopsy. But that's it. We've got a switch, a motor, and a gearbox. So we've got a motor that's packed with, with baked-in gunge and a gearbox with a smashed tooth. I don't really think we're going to get anything usable out of that at this point. So this one's just dead. It's just dead. But we got to explore a couple things along the way, and that was fun. We got to look at a gearbox, which is not a planetary drive. I'm going to try and get one where we do a specific planetary drive, but you can find an autopsy where we've done that before. We've done planetary drives, and we've done some really big ones on the old Kuka robot stuff. So that's it for that one. If you're interested in learning more about taking things apart and how the world works and how stuff functions, check out thegeekgroup.org because there are thousands of other guys just like you who are interested in exploring this stuff. And we all hang out together at irc.thegeekgroup.org or here at the lab in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And you are absolutely welcome to come and check us out anytime you want. I'm Chris Bowden. You guys have fun. We'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.